O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week I posed the question to you, the question that, that maybe you've asked of me, that you've asked of one another, this question, what do people do who don't have the Lord? What do people do who don't have faith? What do people do who don't love the Lord? And the answer was that awful answer, they go to hell. And then I ask you, what do you do if you don't have the Lord? And then it, it hits close to home, without the Lord we are in despair. We go to hell. And yet, praise be to God, we have a faith. We have the Holy Spirit, that helper who has claimed us as his own, who has connected us to Jesus, our good shepherd, but our brother who laid down his life for us, who has reconciled us to the Father. And then I ended the sermon by asking you, so what do people do who have the Lord? What do people do who love the Lord? Well, Jesus actually answers this question point blank today. So if you, if you open your bulletin, I know a lot of you because as good Lutherans, we always bring our Bibles. I know you brought your Bible to church today. A few of you left it. No, I'm just being sarcastic. Um, is that good that we don't bring our, I don't know, but we print it in the bulletin. So open your bulletin uh, to the gospel lesson. I just have one verse here that I want you to look at initially, and I want you to read it with me, because here the, the question is, what do people do who have the Lord, or what do people do who love the Lord? And then read John 14, 15 with me. These are, these are Jesus' words, so let's read it together. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. There's the answer. What do people do who love the Lord? Well, Jesus himself says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will follow me. You'll be my disciples. If you love me, you will be little Christ. You will look like Christians. You'll look like me. You will be people who share the love that has been shown to you. You'll share the forgiveness and the mercy. This is what you will do. People who love the Lord look like children of the Heavenly Father. Well, sometimes, though, these conditional statements, and, and Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, sometimes they can be misused. Sometimes they can be seen as manipulative, or maybe you hear this and it just doesn't hit you quite right. I'll give you a few examples. Maybe it's a parent to their child, and maybe it's an, an adult parent to their, a, 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 most parents are adults, uh, a parent to their adult child. Maybe it just happened recently. If you love me, you will come back home for Mother's Day. If you love me, you will. And, and, and going for that, that guilt trip. This may have happened in my family a few times. Or maybe it is uh, between a husband and a wife. The husband says, if you really love me, you will let me get that new Harley Davidson. After all, I'm going to be turning 50 this year. I've worked a lot. If you love me, you'd let me get it. Or maybe, and this is a little more insidious, it's that young romantic relationship between teenagers that says, if you love me, you won't say no. We hear these words and they think they sound kind of manipulative, but, but this is Jesus talking here. And Jesus doesn't say things uh, in order to be manipulative. Jesus doesn't say something to twist the words around so he gets some benefit and, and you or I just unwittingly follow along. No, he says these things because he is the way and the truth and the life. And he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's the commandments of his Father. God's will is a good and perfect will, and what he wants for us is life. And when we keep his commandments, when we are obedient children, things just go well for us. Jesus doesn't have a guilt trip here. His goal is simply that you are shaped in his image, that you are his disciple, that you are his brother and sister. Children of the Heavenly Father. That we are sons and daughters of God. So there's nothing better for you, there's nothing better for me than to love Jesus than to keep his commandments. 
He, he wants to save all of us. Uh, we're not just a soul inside of a body. He wants to save all of us body and soul. And so our lives, this side of Jesus returning or dying, are still lives that are characterized by following him, loving him, in and out of church, day in and day out, minute to minute. And in order to help us in that, he sends us the Holy Spirit. And that's why, although we are two Sundays away from Pentecost, we've got this image of the Holy Spirit, of, of dove, reminding us of the Holy Spirit. Because here in John 14, verse 16, Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who has called us and gathers us together, enlightens us and sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit who called us in the waters of baptism says, you are a child of God. Jesus is your brother, your big brother, who laid down his life for you. And as a child of God, your will is not your own anymore. Children, good children, they know the fourth commandment. They obey their parents. They honor and love them. And we live to follow God's will because that's just what children do. But maybe there are times you think you'd rather be an orphan. Maybe there are times your parents have let you down. Or maybe there are times you just, you look at those, those lives of, of orphans that are out there in the street and it looks like an interesting life, a life where you're not beholden to anyone, no rules, no one to tell you what to think or when to eat or suggest what to wear can manipulate other people to get what you want, when you want it. There's no law. Autonomy is the goal. You can be your own master. Pursue your own goals. Maybe there are times that, that you and I, we envy those orphans so much that there's an ache inside. I even sometimes think that as a Missouri Synod Lutheran. If I didn't have these doctrines, these laws, these rules, I could just kind of do whatever. There's some freedom there. An allure. And the reality is if we look at our lives, sometimes we look like orphans. People who have run away from our Heavenly Father have run away from our brother, Jesus, who look like we are running around ragged. The truth is, though, we can't have it both ways. You can't be an orphan and be a child of the Heavenly Father. It's one or the other. See, orphans, they do live like street children. No father, no mother. But, but if you would watch them and ask them in the quiet moments when they are scrounging around for just a morsel of food, looking for some peace, in those quiet moments there's only crushing loneliness and isolation. No one to count on. You can't even count on the other orphans because they might stab you in the back just to get what you have. No shoulder to cry on. Cut off. And our sinful nature would leave us alone. Cut off from God. Cut off from others. The truth is, when the Father finally comes, you and I, we don't want to be orphans. We, we want to be, we need to be, with our brother, Jesus. Jesus who says, Dad, here they are. Your children. And I've claimed them for you. And so we come into God's house this morning repenting of those times that we don't look like God's children. And yet that doesn't mean we don't continue to strive. That we don't repent of those times we have forsaken God's law. We say, Father... Thank you 
for buying us with a price. Thank you that we are not those orphans who have no hope and no future, but we have an inheritance. We have a peace for right now that passes understanding, and it only gets better. You are a child of God. Your name written in the book of life. You're part of the family. We are in this together with our brother Jesus who has laid down his life for us. Jesus, the one who is the way, and in him there is going. Jesus, with him, with, who is the truth, and in him there is knowing. Jesus, who is the life, and in him there is living. Reality fully revealed. No deceit. No confusion. Because only children have a hope. Only children know that they are truly loved. And only children in being truly loved know how to love and obey and know that everything is as it should be. You are a child of God. So stop living like orphans. Live in the reality of the Holy Spirit. Repent those times you've lusted after the life of orphans, and then know that you are in God's house this morning being an obedient child, receiving his gifts, coming together as a family, and then being fed and nourished to go out into the world. So what do people do who have the Lord? What do people do who love the Lord? They love and obey Jesus. It's just what children who have been loved, been bought with a price, who are fully heirs in the family do. So it's just who you are, a child of God, set free, set free to live as one who is loved, as one who is obedient, as one who has a peace that passes understanding. The glory be to Jesus. Amen. Please stand.